Good morning, guys. Hey, this is going to be a real, they're all real, but this is going to be a real message, okay, guys? I'm just, because it's a little personal, too. I'm going to spare you the details because they're not, the Lord's not done yet working on this. Two scriptures. Um, it's, it's house cleaning time, guys. His house. God's house. And guess what? We're his house. His temple that he chose to live in. It's a long one and it's Old Testament and I get it. And there's a lot of stuff that is like... Anyhow, we'll get into this in a second. Second Chronicles 29. And it's about Hezekiah cleaning the temple. Because it was polluted. And then, this is the scripture that I got. Nothing hidden. Therefore, judge nothing before the time of the Lord, because he's going to judge it. And he's going to expose it and bring it to light. It's... 1 Corinthians 4 and 5. I was going to print it out. My planner broke. I've got some. I just... Long story, but... I haven't got to, got to them yet. I may just go buy one. I just... That's one of the things the enemy has been plaguing me with. Is my time. And so I'm going to back off a little bit and really spend some time, more time with the Lord. I'd spend a lot of time with him and I'm always constantly praying that's not, but it's the distractive stuff. So that's part of my house cleaning. But what happened, guys, was it was a business decision that I had, that I was needing to make. And on the outside, it looked, it was a good business decision. But it wasn't a godly business decision. I was ignoring that part of it. I knew better. I'm still processing it, so I just need a little bit of grace on this, guys. I'll spare you the details. But it wasn't a good decision because it wasn't a godly decision. Business-wise, it made sense. Godly-wise. Spiritually wise, Holy Ghost, biblically even, it was sin. And then I compounded it by ignoring it. Until I got called out by someone. And that's kind of part of this message too is, this all this virtual reality garbage Literally, it is garbage about the church. It takes away the personal accountability. Because you can just turn it off, turn it on. You can say you watched so-and-so preaching. Well, you sat there and, who knows, maybe we're sitting there having a beer or whatever. I'm not, maybe not, I'm, but or whatever. You, you, if you hear something you don't like, you can turn it off. This whole coronavirus mess, guys, why did it even happen? God, God is great, and His grace and mercy and truth is awesome. Why did He allow it to happen? Because He's cleaning the house. Read them. Read, it's kind of long, and yes, I get it. There's the bulls and the goats and all that stuff, you know. Um, but He was cleaning the temple. Took all the stuff out and purged it. That's what God's doing. That's why that message and it's and it's and it is about there's a fire coming to America, a firestorm, and it's, it's we're in the midst of it right now. <clears throat> it's happening all around us. It's choose time, guys. Choice time. <clears throat> I was at a church one time, and all I heard about was the the bigger building, the better, bigger. You know. Okay, great space constraints or whatever. I was in prayer and the Lord said, why are you looking for another house? 
I've already got one. I've already created one. That would be you and me, guys. So yes, we do need to gather. Yes, we do need a building to gather a place, whether it's a house, whether it's friends, whether it's in the house, in a house, in a house assembly of God, gathering together. That's very important. Because then the personal accountability comes in, the prayer and worship. But if we don't have anything to bring to the table, because our own house is polluted and diluted and twisted up, <clears throat> that's what we get. It becomes like a circus act, honestly, more than a more than a house of prayer, of service. <laughs> Because everybody's got hidden stuff. So what are we hiding, guys? Nothing hidden anymore. It's it's not just personal accountability. It's not accountability to each other. It's accountability to God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And you're going to get that at 5 in the morning. When you get up with me to pray. Maybe not just with me, but it, we just all need to pray. There's so much to pray for. God called the prophet Elijah to accountability. It's one of the messages I got out there. He's in the cave hiding. Jezebel's going to kill him. Found a, a dark place to hide. Sound familiar? What are we hiding, guys? In our hearts, in our minds, from our friends our spouses, from our children, from God. He wants nothing hidden, guys. The exposure is not, there's a whole different level of the exposure. It's to set you free. Like the woman caught in adultery, or, you know, you can pick one, one worse than the other, whatever. They're not sin is sin. But what did Jesus do? He that has, a first, has, no, has no sin and cast the first stone. Woman, where are your accusers? I don't accuse you, but go and sin no more. That's what he's telling us, guys. It's house cleaning time. Some of the exposure may just be at five in the morning because it may just be you getting your heart clean with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Or if you keep ignoring it, maybe it might get exposed and you, you know, you'll really get your behind chapped. Me too, guys. I'm telling you right now, there's some stuff that floods like, okay, Lord. It's just, it's going to take a little bit of time and effort on my part, too, to really get to the bottom of this. Because I ignored it. I ignored God. Jesus and his word. So oh, it's one of those, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. He wants nothing hidden, guys. He's cleaning the house, and you're the house that he's cleaning. Because he wants the bride without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. So if he's highlighting things in your life, let him. There is a good message in this guy. God is always good. His grace and mercy is sufficient for this day of trouble. And it's all around, but we've been polluted by all this stuff. And everything's been... I'm not trying to politicize anything, but all this stuff's become an idol, guys. A false idol. Twist it up. It's God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word. Instead, we're looking for the government to save the day. Guys, come on. That's the same people that locked us up. And want to make a vaccine with a chip in it, probably. And it's all based upon the money and all the other lies and all the other twisted up stuff. 
and all this mass stuff. I'm not saying that there's not maybe maybe a, a hint of some health reasons behind it, but it's the reason behind it. <clears throat> one of the main things, and I'm going to end with this, one of the main sins that America is hiding behind. Nothing hidden. Is the abortion issue, guys. I'm sorry to tell you that. But we've idolized the, mur the murder of innocent lives. We've idolized war. We've idolized, you don't believe me? Go watch movies. Bruce Willis flying through the air with uh, two guns and he's fighting a bunch of bad guys with AK-47s or whatever. And they can't hit nothing and he gets everybody. We've idolized vigilantes. I've idolized all these horror movies. And I turned off some cartoons that my grandkids were watching because it was so violent. Minecraft or whatever, all, all this crazy stuff. It's just polluted and diluted our minds, guys, and twisted us up into not listening to God, Jesus, reading our Bible, the Holy Ghost. Because we're so busy with this Pollution. Back to First Second Chronicles 29. It's house cleaning time, guys. And you're in the house. Me too. I don't get a free pass. This is not Monopoly. I don't get to pass go and collect 200 bucks. Be nice. I'd use 200 bucks. No. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. So this is a rubber meets the road message, guys. He's house cleaning. Nobody likes to do deep house cleaning. Everybody does the, you know, the picking up stuff and things, you know, most normal people do. And, you know, and then it's easier and you pick the same with your car, you know, if you don't throw trash on the floor and you just, you know, you pick it up as you go, it's, it stays clean. Barely clean. Nobody really wants to do the deep cleaning that often because a lot of times it's a lot of work. Or the yard work. Some people like to do that stuff, but most people don't too much. But that's where God's at right now. And Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. We're not going to change the world and be the light of the world and stand in the gap and reach the lost souls if we're lost because we've got something hidden in our heart. Nothing hidden, guys. Read it. Read. Read. You know, I got that in prayer, guys. Like the Lord told me, nothing hidden. And then I just typed in nothing hidden in my Bible tool. Search. And that's what came up. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. God's going to expose it. Jesus is going to expose it. The Holy Ghost is going to expose it. Not the coronavirus. It was just what he used to do that. To get us to wake up. And smell this coffee. Which I love the smell of coffee. I almost as much like to drink it. Honestly, I just, it smells great. It's not to pollute our mind with the cares and things of this world, though. Because that's what the enemy's doing. He's laying in wait with these traps. God's house cleaning. Hezekiah was house cleaning. The temple needs cleaning, guys. It's dirty and polluted and diluted and twisted. Read Isaiah 27.1. We're all guilty of it, guys. That's why I said it's time to repent between the porch and the altar and weep and pray. Just look around, guys. This nation is in deep trouble. Church is in turmoil. Nobody wants to hear that. They all want to hear the, the blessed life and you're going to get a new car and fly around in your own personal jet. 
and have, you know, drink pina coladas on a beach somewhere or whatever, you know. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Um, it's just nothing hidden anymore, guys. Me too. Hurts a little bit. Way more than the band-aid that's stuck on a, on a, on a wound. This is like open heart surgery, guys, and then and then after you have it, there's a recovery time. You can't just most of the time when something that serious happens to people, they can't you can't just get up and walk out the door. Even the anesthesia has to wear off, and then that once that wears off, I mean, there's just things that have to take place, and you can't deviate from that path and just. I'm gonna end with this, okay? I did this once years ago. Got a really bad motorcycle wreck, and you know, it, long story, but about this big of a spot, about as big as a half dollar, it took all, all the meat off my ankle bone, off the bone itself, and it hurt. That was the only thing that happened, and it could have been way worse because it was a, it was going 60 miles an hour. It's a long story, but one day I'll share it. Went to the doctor, kept going to the doctor. The insurance company paid for paid for me to be off, but you know, just what's the process? Well, I didn't, I kind of just didn't go through the process. I just went back to work after like three days. One was a carpenter guy that's framing houses in Texas and it's hot. Sweat, dirt, sawdust poured down into there and it became infected, gangrene set in. I didn't follow the process. Long story, but the Lord miraculously healed it. Doctor, we're gonna cut it off. Still got my foot. But what I'm saying is we're in the process of and he's in the process of cleaning house. Nothing hidden anymore, guys. So what are you hiding in your heart? What are you hiding from God? What are you hiding from people around you? Nothing hidden. Love you guys.